to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 8, Arrays and Loops. In this lesson, we're going to define an array, we'll explain some common loop types and their functionality, we'll describe nested loops, and then we'll demonstrate some loop implementation. Let's start with an array. An array is used to store multiple values of a single variable type. And for this, we need a type and then we'll have indexes of that array. In blueprints, an array variable is symbolized by this group of squares. And we have the name of the array, the variable type that can exist in that array. And the benefit of an array is that we have multiple actions that we can perform on that array. For instance, we can add an item or an index, we can remove an item or an index, we can clear all of the items from the array, we can find an item within the array. We can get a copy or reference of that item. And there's many, many more functionalities of arrays. These are very useful tools in Unreal Engine when we know we're going to be creating multiple copies of a similar item. Loops do pretty much what they say. They allow us to loop through and perform functionality multiple times without needing to write the code for each individual item. And there's three common loop types. A while loop, where the input is a Boolean, and the loop will continue to run as long as that Boolean stays true. There is a risk with using while loops in that it's very easy to create an infinite loop. If you don't set up your loop correctly to change that Boolean, it'll just keep running forever and likely your program is gonna crash. Luckily, Unreal Engine has some protections in place, so if you create a while loop that has an infinite loop, and it will give you a warning and likely not crash the entire program, but there is still some risk, so I usually recommend stay away from while loops unless you have a very good understanding of what you're doing and you make sure that the code is implemented correctly. A for loop has inputs of a starting integer and an ending integer, and it's gonna run the code in the loop and increment the integer until the last index is reached. A for loop is useful if you know how many times you want to run something and you want to do it that set number of times, or if your input is going to be a set integer. And the final loop type, and arguably the one that I use the most, is a for each loop. In a for each loop, the input is an array, and it will perform functionality for each item in the array. A nested loop is when a loop is put inside another loop. And the way this will work is that the initial loop will start with its first index. And the next nested loop will go through its complete loop. Then the initial loop will move to the next index and the nested loop will complete its loop again. And this will repeat until the initial loop has reached its last index. So if you had three nested loops, the first loop would start on index one. We'd go to our next loop and do index one of this loop. And then the third nested loop would run through its complete functionality. The second loop would go to its next index, run through its complete functionality on the third loop, and so on until the second loop had completed its entire loop. Then we would go to the next index of our initial loop and start the whole process over again. So let's demonstrate some loop implementation into our project. I wanna start by creating some functionality where when the bug gets too close to the player, it will cause some damage to the tower. Let's start by going to our tower and we're gonna create a new variable. And this variable is going to be an integer and we're gonna call it tower health. Let's compile so that we can set this and let's just set it to something like three to start. So the tower can hit, be hit by three bugs before it is game over. And we can set this later on for different difficulties. If you wanted to have an easy mode, you could set this to a much higher value. You could have a hard mode where maybe it's set to one, which means when one bug hits the tower, game over. Now that we have that variable set up, let's go back to our bug. And we have a function here wherein we are moving to the tower and we set an acceptance radius of 200, which means when our AI is moved within 200 units of the tower, 
we have completed the movement. And an output of this AI move two is on success. So we can drag off of this to demonstrate, we can type a print string of hello. There's also the on fail, which means if there was anything that was preventing the bug from completing this movement, we would fire this event. And we could use this for debugging purposes, or if we wanted some functionality in our game, where if there was an obstruction and the bug couldn't get to the player, then we could fire that event as well. Let's test this. We're gonna compile. And now when a bug gets close to us, we should see it printed to the console. So now we can use this to create some functionality for dealing damage to the player. And if you remember, we already set up an event for this in our player tower called take damage. And we already have a reference to our tower here. Now, the issue is that this tower variable is set up as an actor. So if we try to call that function, take damage, it won't show up. And there's two ways to get around this. The first way is we can set our tower variable to player tower. And this will automatically update it, which means now when we type take, we do have access to that function. The second way is by using casting. And casting is a little bit tricky and we're gonna cover it in a future lesson. So for now, let's use this way of setting this variable as the variable type that we want, which will give us access to the functions of that variable. Let's delete this print string and let's attach take damage to on success. And there's one more thing I want to do, and that's once the player takes damage from the bug, I want to remove that bug from the game. So we'll just drag off here and we'll type destroy actor. And this way the screen doesn't get clogged up with bugs that are just waiting to be destroyed. Let's compile. And when we play test this, when a bug gets close, we should call take damage, which prints hello to the screen and the bug is destroyed. But the player isn't taking damage yet. Let's set that up. In our take damage event, let's get our tower health. We can delete this. And let's drag off here and type minus minus. This is a decrement. And this will automatically subtract one and then give us a reference to the new integer. It's the same as doing subtract one and then setting our tower health to the same value. So this one decrement has the same functionality as subtracting one and then setting it. So let's use decrement. We're going to drag this in here. And now every time a bug gets to us, it's going to remove one health from our tower, but this will just keep going on forever and we'll eventually get into negative health, which is not what we want. So let's do a check that when we reach zero health, something will happen. Let's create a branch and let's check that when this is less than or equal to zero will be true. And just for now, let's do a print string and we can just get this reference to our new health value, plug it right in there. And now once we reach zero health, it's gonna give us a value of what that health was. If we don't reach zero health though, nothing will happen. And just because this is a little bit hard to see, I'm going to change this to red so we can see a little bit better on the screen. We didn't see anything printed. We should be at two health, one health. This one will take us to zero and we should see it print to the screen. Now it'll keep happening and that number will just keep going down indefinitely. We want to end the game now. Here I am in my game mode. And let's set up a new array for all of the bugs that we create into the world. We're going to create a new variable in our game mode. We're going to call this bugs array. For our variable type, we want to find BP bug. And we'll get an object reference. Now next to the variable type where we set the type, there's another drop down here. And we can select that and then set this up as an array. Now we have a bugs array and we can use this to store a value for every bug that's in the scene. Let's go to our spawn bug function 
and we'll get our array. We're going to type add, and this will allow us to add new indices to our bugs array. Let's connect this, and then we'll take the reference of the actor that we've spawned and drag it in to here. Now, after we've created a bug, we're going to add it to this array. And we'll use this in a future lesson when we're setting up our game over screen, which means we need to set up our game over functionality. And we'll do that in the next lesson.